Hello, this is Carrie McLaughlin. I am South Atlantic Council staff, and I'm going to review um, a presentation on the public hearing summary for Coastal Migratory Pelagics Framework Amendment 4, which um, deals with management measures for Atlantic Cobia. A little background on the federal fisheries regulatory process starting um, down here at the bottom. The council gets uh, input from council staff from the stock assessments called CDAR, from the scientific and statistical committee, and then from our advisory panels and public input on um, an issue or something that needs to be addressed in the fishery. And that goes to the council. Um, they get input from scientists and from fishing stakeholders and develop fishery management plans and amendments to those plans. Once those are approved, they are sent to the National Marine Fisheries Service and the Secretary of Commerce, who reviews the amendments and implements the federal fishing regulations. Now with CMP Framework Amendment 4, here's a little background. In 2015, the recreational landings for Atlantic Cobia were over 1.5 million pounds, but the recreational annual catch limit for 2015 was only 630,000 pounds. So as required, NIMS reduced the 2016 recreational season to ensure that the landings would not go over the recreational ACL again. And so the season closure date was set for June 20th, 2016. But this early closure will have negative social and economic impacts on recreational fishermen, especially in North Carolina and Virginia. So the South Atlantic Council is considering some changes to management to try to ensure longer future seasons and allow fair access to cobia for fishermen in all states. In March 2016, that's when the council directed staff to start working on Framework Amendment 4. And in May, we held um, a public meeting and webinar meeting to get public input. And uh, we also received input on an online comment form that was provided to the council on um, potential actions and alternatives for this framework amendment. And then in June 2016, the South Atlantic Council reviewed all that public input. They made some changes to the amendment, selected some preferred alternatives, and approved for public hearings. So we're holding those hearings now, and we have information about that on our website and at the end of this presentation. And then in September, the South Atlantic Council will review all the public input from the hearings, select preferred alternatives, and approve the amendment for formal review by the Secretary of Commerce. And um, like we're expected to have all the changes implemented early 2017. There are uh, several actions in Framework Amendment 4. There uh, is an action to modify the recreational harvest limits, so the bag and vessel limits for Atlantic Cobia, modify the recreational minimum size limit, modify the recreational accountability measures for Atlantic Cobia, and then establish a commercial trip limit with a step down for Atlantic Cobia. There's also an action in here to change the recreational fishing year, but um, the NOAA General Counsel has advised us that this cannot be changed through a framework amendment. It has to be changed in a fishery management plan amendment. And the difference between those, um, usually plan amendments take a little longer, but in for, for the mackerel and cobia, this is a joint fishery management plan with the Gulf of Mexico, so both councils would have to approve a plan amendment. So uh, the South Atlantic Council will look into this in September. They'll have to remove that action out of the Framework Amendment 4, and they may decide to put it in a future plan amendment and start work on that. However, um, we already there's analysis for how changing the recreational fishing year would affect um, the fishery, and you may want to go ahead and give some, pub some input on the recreational fishing year, especially how it kind of interacts with the bag and vessel limit and minimum size limit. So framework amendment four would um, apply to fishermen harvesting Atlantic Cobia in federal waters from Georgia through New York. So this is the Atlantic group Cobia. The boundary between Atlantic group and Gulf group is the Georgia Florida state line, and that was based on the approach used in the most recent stock assessment, and then it was implemented in 2015 
through Amendment 20B. And so down here we have uh, a larger picture of the Gulf group that shows this Florida East Coast zone. So all of the cobia that are harvested off the Florida East Coast, that actually comes out of the Gulf annual catch limit. The current management measures uh, for Atlantic cobia, which is Georgia through New York, in federal waters, there's a minimum size limit, 33 inches fork length, and the possession limit for commercial and recreational is two fish per person per day. There is no federal permit, uh, commercial permit requirement, but you must sell to a federally permitted dealer. And then we have the recreational ACL for 2016 and subsequent years is 620,000 pounds, and the commercial is 50,000 pounds. This table shows the current management in state waters. Uh, Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina recently made some changes to uh, management in state waters. Virginia has a one fish per person bag limit and a two fish vessel limit. And then also their uh, minimum size limit is 40 inches total length, which is about 35 to 36 inches fork length. And then North Carolina recently implemented a one fish uh, per person bag limit, and then a vessel limit for the four higher when it's four per vessel or one uh, per person when less than four people are on board and private um, vessels, two fish per vessels with um, more than one person on board. And then also increase the minimum size limit for cobia taken from state waters to 37 inches fork length. And then in South Carolina, um, the state recently created a management zone south of Jeremy Inlet and at a so island, so the southern part of the state, and implemented uh, one fish per person bag limit June 1st through April 30th, and then catch and release only for the month of May, and then a vessel limit of three fish per person or one, or three fish per vessel or one per person, whichever is lower. And um, South Carolina and Georgia have the 33 inches fork length. So just to remind everybody, state waters is shore to three miles, and then federal waters is three to 200 miles. Okay, getting into the actions in CMP Framework Amendment 4. Action 1 modifies the recreational management measures for Atlantic Cobia, and it's divided into uh, two sub-actions. And we did this so you, you would be able to look at the analysis of the combinations of the bag and vessel limits and the minimum size limit. Action 1-1 modifies the harvest limits for Atlantic Cobia for recreational. Alternative 1, it's uh, two fish per person per day. Under preferred alternative 2, so this is the council preferred alternative uh, for the recreational bag limit and preferred sub-alternative 2A, one fish per person per day. And then under preferred alternative three, which establishes the vessel limit for recreational harvest, we have several alternatives. And the council's preferred sub-alternative is three fish per vessel per day. So the bag limit would be uh, one per person per day with up to three fish per vessel. Action 1-2 modifies the minimum size limit. So the current uh, minimum size limit is 33 inches fork length. And this action, um, it has language that says that the change to the minimum size limit would apply to commercial, but this action will affect recreational only, and the council may decide to change commercial, commercial minimum size limit later. Um, the intent was to for this to apply to recreational, and um, so for now, the commercial harvest will remain at 33 inches fork length. But the council's preferred sub-alternative uh, for re the recreational minimum size limit would be to increase it to 36 inches for clean for federal waters. We have a table in here. This is table S-2 from the public hearing summary, which is available on our website. And it shows um, co the combination of minimum size limit, and then we have the bag limit and vessel limit. And the highlighted cells are the, the council's current preferred alternatives. And then we have dates in here of when um, it would be estimated that the recreational landings would meet that recreational ACL of 620,000 pounds. And what this would show is that, um, is so you would be able to understand how 
increasing the minimum size limit and uh, changing the bag and vessel limits would slow the rate of harvest of the recreational landings. So under the current preferred alternatives, um, the recreational landings would reach that ACL between somewhere between July 17th and July 20th, so around the third week in July. And as the minimum size limit is increased, um, the longer the period before the recreational landings hit the ACL, and of course the lower the vessel limit and bag limit, the uh, longer it will take for the landings to hit the ACL. Action two is the um, action to modify the recreational fishing year for Atlantic Cobia. And again, we have um, NOAA, G NOAA General Counsel has advised that we can't change this through a framework amendment. It has to go through a plan amendment, joint plan amendment with the Gulf. So this action will be moved out of this and into a plan amendment at the September meeting. However, you may still want to comment um, to the council about the recreational fishing year for future consideration. So the current fishing year is January 1st through December 31st. The council's preferred alternative two is May 1st um, through May, April 30th. Then we have alternative three, which is June 1st through May 31st, and alternative four, which is April 1st through March 31st. And we have um, a figure S2 from the public hearing summary, and this shows the landings um, by month for 2013, 2014, and 2015. And so they start to increase in uh, March and April with a peak in May and June, and then um, start to come back down. So this is the primary period when landings are the highest. In table S3 uh, from the public hearing summary, it's similar to the one we showed before where we have the highlighted uh, preferred alternatives for the si minimum size limit, bag limit, and vessel limit. And if the, um, if the fishing year started in May 1st, how this, um, how long it would take for the recreational landings to reach the ACL. So for this one, if the fishing year started May 1st, so that's when the quota um, would go back to zero and landings uh, would start to be counted. If it started May 1st, under the preferred alternatives that it would be somewhere between uh, July 19th and July 23rd of when landings would hit that ACL. So it would be very similar to uh, the current fishing year, January 1st through December 31st. We also have table S4, which is alternative three, where the recreational fishing year would start June 1st through May 31st. And table S5, which is alternative four, when fishing year starts on April 1st. Moving on to action three, which would modify the recreational accountability measures, which we call AMs, for Atlantic Cobia. So um, the current accountability measures for Atlantic Cobia for recreational, if the recreational ACL and the total ACL, so commercial plus recreational, is exceeded and the stock is designated as overfished, then the following year's recreational ACL will be reduced. We call this a postseason AM, um, or it could be called a payback. This has not been, um, this one has not been triggered yet in any recent years. Uh, the, the other one is if the landings exceed the recreational ACL, then the regional administrator will reduce the length of the following fishing year so that landings uh, will meet the recreational annual catch target but not exceed the ACL again. So this is what happened when the 2015 landings were over the recreational ACL, so the 2016 fishing year had to be reduced. For commercial, um, there's an in-season closure, so when landings are uh, reached the commercial ACL or projected to reach it, then the commercial harvest will close for the rest of the fishing year. And if the commercial landings exceed the ACL and the total ACL and the stock is overfished, then there will be um, a payback where the commercial ACL is reduced. For this action, uh, the council is only considering changes to the recreational accountability measures. They have selected a preferred alternative to which reduces the length of the following fishing season, same as the one that's in place now, except that 
the evaluation would be based just on um, one year instead of the rolling average of three years. And then we have a couple sub-alternatives that give some conditions for if this uh, AM is triggered. Under 2A, it would only uh, be triggered if the species is designated as overfished. Sub-alternative 2B, which is the council's preferred, uh, would be, this AM would be triggered if the total ACL and the recreational ACL were exceeded. And then 2C is if the species is overfished and the total ACL is exceeded. Alternative 3 uh, is the AM to reduce the recreational ACL if there's an overage. And then we have the same three conditions to trigger this accountability measure. Um, 3A, only if the species is overfished. 3B, if the total ACL is exceeded. And 3C, sorry, it should be 3C, um, if the species is overfished and the total ACL is exceeded. Alternative 4 is an in-season closure for recreational. So similar to uh, what the commercial has when the um, landings are reached or projected to reach the recreational ACL, then the recreational harvest would close for the remainder of the fishing year with a couple of conditions if the species overfish or regardless of the overfish status. This would require that the recreational landings be tracked fast enough to be able to close it before there's an overage. And then alternative five, which reduces, um, which is an AM to reduce the recreational vessel limit of the following fishing year if there is an overage one year. And um, this also has sub-alternatives, which is, should say 5A, 5B, 5C. And um, if the species is designated overfished, if the total ACL is also exceeded, or both of those things. So a few considerations about these recreational accountability measures. Um, under the current AMs, the average is evaluated based on landings from the most recent three years under that ACL. Under the council's preferred alternative two and then also alternative three, this would change the AMs um, so that the evaluation is based only on the landings of the year with the overage that previous year. And after that, it would just go back. And um, this probably would be able to capture the dynamics of this fishery and recreational harvest a little better. And the council may also select more than one preferred alternative to establish a system of AMs for recreational. So the postseason AMs, um, which could be a reduced season length, a reduced recreational ACL, or a reduced vessel limit, could be specified to be applied in a certain order to mitigate an overage or slow the rate of harvest in the next year. So for example, if there's an overage, um, the council could set this up where first there would be a reduced vessel limit for that next year. And then it would go back to uh, whatever the status quo vessel limit is, if there is one. And if the vessel, the reduced vessel limit isn't um, enough to slow the rate of harvest and mitigate an overage, then there could be a reduced season length. And if that's not enough, then there could be a reduced ACL. So that's what the council wants to hear about. Um, how would you want those applied? What order? Moving on to action four, this establishes a commercial trip limit. So currently there's a possession limit of two fish per person per day. Alternative two is to establish the commercial trip limit for two fish per person per day, and then it would decrease to one fish per person per day when 75% of the commercial ACL has been met. Alternative three sets it up as more of a vessel limit where it's six fish per person per day with a step down to three fish per vessel per day. I'm sorry, six fish per vessel per day and a step down of three fish per vessel per day when 75% of the ACL is met. And then alternative four, which is a combination where there's two fish per person per day with no more than six per vessel and the step down to one per person per day with no more than three per vessel when 75% of the ACL has been met. Table S7 from the public hearing summary shows you the estimated months when the landings for each of these years of commercial landings reach 75% of that commercial ACL, which is uh, 37,500 pounds, and that commercial, um, the current commercial ACL, which is 50,000 pounds. So this is um, when there would have been a step down and then when the ACL would have been reached. 
So you can get your public input to the council by attending a public meeting. Uh, the locations and location information are, is on our website. We also have a webinar Q&A and a public hearing on August 1st where you can learn more about it, ask questions, uh, talk to council members who will be there and council staff, and then um, you can speak on the record and those will be um, provided to the council. And then you can also submit comments via our online comment form. That's on our website also on the public hearing page and the link here. You can mail your comments to um, the address there. So the deadline for comments to be included in the comment overview for the September 26th council meeting is August 19th. Um, anything after that will be made available to the council members, but it's not going to be part of the briefing book. If you have questions about Framework Amendment 4 or COBIA, you can contact me, Carrie McLaughlin. That's my um, office line or email. And the general questions about the council and council process you can go to Amber Von Harten, uh, our fishery outreach specialist, or Kim Iverson, our public information officer. We also have a Facebook page and a Twitter page where you can stay up to date. I have a Three more um, slides that are available in the PDF version. Uh, one is the conversion table for total length to fork length for Atlantic Cobia that was used in the stock assessment. And then also the ACLs for Gulf and Atlantic Group Cobia. And then so a little more of the background information about the recreational AMs and how they applied uh, in 2015 to 2016. And those are available in the PDF. So thank you for listening and please get in touch if you have any questions. Thanks.